the stage is set, Gladiator Arena, Los Angeles, California. More preliminary round action here in our second half season. Mike Adamley along with Larry Zonka, and we're gonna go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Hand to hand combat in the joust, Larry. A little fast action right off the bat. I know our gladiators are ready. Our contenders better be. Up first are the women. A look at Sky and a contender, Carolyn Dean, 27 years old from Austell, Georgia. A police officer down there. Actually, with the Atlanta Police Department. Contenders have 30 seconds to see if they can knock the gladiator off the platform. Sky with that long reach. That may be a problem for Carolyn. Carolyn looking good up there, Larry. Got the wide stance and doing a good job of blocking. Ten seconds to go in this 30-second tussle. If she can go the distance, she'll get five points for the draw. And Carolyn Dean has done it. How about it for our police officer from Atlanta, Georgia? It's amazing she was able to hang in there. She absorbed some heavy blows. How about this one right at the whistle? Say hello to the American Gladiators. Carolyn Dean, you're a lean, mean, jousting machine up there. How yes. much did your background as a police officer help, if any? Oh, it helped me a lot, because I'm used to fighting, and uh, I'm, I stood here and took the beating. I don't run away. No way you run away, and it's got to be tough to look at somebody who is six foot you three inches tall. Right. <laughs> The Samuel Goldwyn Company presents the American Gladiators. Preliminary round competition in our second half season continues here on the American Gladiators. Larry, proof positive that if you're a member of the police force, you are someone to be reckoned with. Carolyn Dean has proved that. Carolyn Dean, a police officer in every respect. She's that laid back, cautious, easygoing, very patient, but you show her a little violence and this gal comes up with a truckload to return. And Larry, let me tell you that her opponent is no pushover either. Her name is Lynn Bell, 27 years old from San Pedro, California. She's a customer service rep in computers down there, an outstanding softball star and volleyball player in high school. Lynn Bell would like to ring Sky's oh bell here. Sky wastes no time ringing some bells of her own. Lynn had Sky off balance there momentarily. Sky's got it together now, though. Who's gonna go? 15 oh. seconds left, and it's Lynn Bell down to the mat. Lynn doing a good job of trading blows. Actually, on a couple of occasions, getting Sky a little off balance, but then she loses hers, and her right foot slips off the platform. And now let's meet the male contenders for this preliminary round match. First up, Michael Small, 24 years old from Roselle Park, New Jersey, a tree surgeon and a two-time All-State football player back in high school. The man with the plan for the Gladiators, six foot four inches of tower. On guard! How he managed to withstand that last shot by Tower, I don't know, but that one he can't handle, and down he goes. Tower with the 10 second knockout. An overhand smash, then a sweep coming from down below like an uppercut. Literally picks the contender up and sweeps him off the platform. What a hit. And Tower's power up there does not bode well for Carlton Fluker, our next contender, 24 years old from Lansing, Michigan, where he's a gymnastics instructor, giving away about 120 pounds and six inches in height. I'll tell you one thing, Larry, he's a battler, however. Oh. <laughs> well, not that much of a battler, I guess. That looked like some kind of gymnastics uh, floor exercise. He just spun himself off the platform. Of course, taking a hit from the likes of Tower, well, might have made a very wise decision. But look at that, he had Tower flinching and blinking early on before Tower was finally able to knock him off. <laughs> Tough kid. On to breakthrough and conquer we go. The next event, the women will start things off. Carolyn Dean first up, she has a five point lead on Lynn Bell after one event. For the Gladiators, Sky will be in the conquer ring and then 
Diamond Will Man Breakthrough. Contender ready! Once again, a chance ready. for the contenders to pick up 10 points. Here comes Carolyn. See what kind of moves she makes on oh. Diamond. Not much of one. She just blazed by her. Diamond still waiting for the move. Diamond does a good job of getting upfield and getting up on her toes. She's all set for the move, but there isn't any. Carolyn just accelerates right into the end zone with a burst of speed. Now let's see what kind of power she has. She's got Sky in the conquering, and 15 seconds to get her at it. She did it. She did it. Unbelievable. The short work of Sky with a power move. I'll tell you what, this gal, when we talk about moves and finesse, this gal's got two things working for her, the basics. She's got speed, which she demonstrated in breakthrough, and power, which she demonstrates in the conquer ring. No fakes here. And I might add a whole lot of heart, Larry. All right, Lynn Bell's turn. The most important person in her life, her young son, Christopher. He's here today watching Mom. Ready, 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 ready. Like Carolyn, she's got diamond and breakthrough and then sky and the conquering. Here comes Lynn Bell. This time, Diamond a little more successful, pulling Lynn out of bounds before she can cross the plane of the goal line. And making her move a little early. And runs out of field. Diamond in good position. Lynn still thinks she can break plane, but she is out of bounds. Still a chance to pick up five points here against Sky. Trying to get that leg. 10 seconds to go. Mary Thompson, our head referee, telling Sky that she has to stay up. Time is out, and Lynn Bell comes up empty. Score one for Diamond and Sky. Shut out by our Gladiators. Sky doing a good job staying up high. She literally throws Lynn around like a rag doll. On to the men we go. Carlton Fluker up first. He and Michael Small have yet to score. For the Gladiators, it'll be the Tower of Power. He'll be inside the conquering, and there's Viper getting ready in breakthrough. Well, if looks could bring him down, Viper would already have Carlton on the ground. But will they work against Carlton's speed? Let's see, I don't know. Viper got part of Carlton's jersey. Referee Larry Thompson said Carlton Fluka was down before he crossed the goal line. See it right here. Nice job by Viper. He's a little out of position. The Carlton's knee definitely touches before the ball crosses the plane. Good call, Larry Thompson. Crowd doesn't like it, but the ref right there. Now, Carlton will do battle with Tower in the cocker ring. Remember what happened in the joust? He had Tower going there a little bit. 10 seconds now. Oh, uh -oh. oh he's got under him a little bit. Five seconds. believe it. Like chopping down a giant redwood, I don't think Tower believes it. How did Carlton Fluker do that? Well, let's take a look at it. He fakes high, gets underneath, he gets a hold of one of those tree trunks and drives upward enough to get Tower off balance. And then just dogged determination on the part of Carlton Fluker in order to get Tower out of the conquer ring. Impressed, Tower? Hey, this kid, this little guy's got some more heart than I can't even describe, but uh, I gave him I gave him 100% credit here to go in that ring against me, and he did the job. He did awesome. <laughs> and the meek shall inherit the earth. And the nice right. going, Steve. One more time. All right, Mike Small. One thing he's comfortable with, that football underneath his arm, a two-time All-State football player in high school in New Jersey at Roselle Park High, number 24. Got his game face on now. Now real pressure in the form of Viper and Tower and Breakthrough. Yeah, he can't kick it across here and Breakthrough. He's got to run it across. Contender ready! Ready and ready! Mr. Small, oh, that time in. clearly a score there. Viper got there, but a little too late. Let's see if Mike Small can do the same thing that Carlton Fluker did. Mike a little bit bigger at 175 pounds. Again, he's got 15 seconds. Locking up high with Tower. 
Trick Towers. is to get Towers' weight up. He may break Mike's arms if oh, Michael yeah. continues that tactic. Yeah. So some great action so far. Kruger and Small tied. But we're just beginning. Skytrap is next. Well, unlike anything they've ever done before, our female contenders will now try to see if they have any upside down aptitude as they take to this sky track course in lane one. It will be our Atlanta police officer, Carolyn Dean, who's apprehended, apprehended many suspects in a squad car but never chased down a gladiator. Our gladiator in lane two will be Diamond in lane three, Lynn Bell. Diamond is essentially the pace setter. To win points, they have to beat the gladiator. Mike, we've got the classic matchup here, the tortoise and the hare. Lynn Kendrick says slow Redder. and steady is the way to win. Kendrick Carolyn says, Redder. man, I'm going to fly. Diamond breaks out fast early. You go too fast in that first straightaway, and that first turn will stop you in a hurry. But Diamond looking good. So is Carolyn Dean. Right now, it's the hare. Well, she can maintain that pace, Mike. Diamond the first to reach the turnaround. Now back they have to come. Can Carolyn Dean in lane one catch up? Here comes Diamond, here comes Dean. Nice smooth gate on Diamond, it's gonna be close. Remember if Carolyn can cross that finish line first, she'll get the tense. Diamond wins it. Carolyn Dean gets five points for being the first contender across. And Lynn Bell brings up the rear. Lynn was doing pretty well. You see her there at the bottom of your screen until she reaches turn number two. Then she spins out and she never gets back in the race. Carolyn Dean, meanwhile, pushed Diamond to the limit. This is how close it was at the finish line. Diamond winning by about a half a body length. Now a look at our male contenders. They will race against Turbo, who is in lane two. And a look at Mike Small, who is no stranger to high places. Michael is the kind of guy who likes to go out on a limb. I happen to be a tree surgeon and climb trees just about every day. Michael repairs broken tree limbs for a living and likes to talk about the time he once took down 256 damaged trees in less than two weeks. What would his name be if he were a gladiator? I think I chose Chainsaw because, uh, hey, it's a little machine that can do a big job. And I'm a little guy looking to do a big job. All right, Chainsaw, this is your chance. Mike Small will be in lane three, Turbo in lane two, and Carlton Fluker in lane one. This ought to be a pretty, pretty good race. Contenders ready! Carlton ready, says he's gonna ready. use all arms in the beginning, utilizing all fours in the straightaway. But look at Carlton Fluker fly. Got a hung up momentarily. Turbo in the middle has the lead. They have to go to the far end of the sky track course, touch the red line, and then come back again. Michael having problems. He spun out in that first hairpin curve. Not using those legs for stability. Turbo in curve number three. A slight lead on Carlton Fluker. This could be close. Turbo pumping and pushing his way by means of those Velcro, Velcro gloves. And he will cross the finish line first. Carlton Fluker, for being the first contender across, will get five points. Well, if you've ever wondered what Velcro tastes like, ask either one of our contenders. Carlton Fluker in the far lane drives his face up into the Velcro when he gets off rhythm. And just moments later, Michael, at the right side of your screen, drives his face up into it. Here's two fellas who are going to have some pretty raw noses. Or at the very least, some serious razor burn. Muscle up, we've got five events to go. Here at Gladiator Arena, we are gonna take to the air our bungee cord game swing shot. Mike Small and Carlton Fluker. Carlton with the five point lead after three events. Mike Small looking to get back in the hunt. One of the Gladiators they'll be facing, Furbo. Obviously the physique of a bodybuilder, but this man also possesses great athletic ability. And wait till you see him in swing shot. He has bungee cord jumped before. Viper will be his partner. Viper also very skilled in this event. 
Contenders mission to pluck balls off that center cylinder. Red ones were three, blue ones two, yellows one. Here they come. Carlton Fluker gets up and he grabs two yellow balls. Up again, he grabs two. Boy, this kid is a whirlwind. Missed the tower. Now he's back up there, got plenty of time to put those back. He's trying desperately to hang on to those things. Mike Small's got a free run there. With 25 seconds left in the clock, Carlton finally puts those two blues away. He's got two more blues, despite the best efforts of Turbo. Well, now Turbo's on his timing. Blocks Carlton on that lead. Seven seconds to go, one last chance for both men. Carlton gets another blue. Can he get up there and back into the scoring pod? That last goal does not count. But still, Carlton Fluker, four blues, two yellows, a total of 10 points. And one of the most amazing efforts we've seen yet here on the American Gladiators in swing shot. I think if Carlton Fluger was any better at this event, he would sprout feathers. Check this out. He goes up, not one blue ball, but two. Snags him, takes him back. Excellent job. Seems very at home on that bungee cord. And demonstrating that if you execute the proper technique, this event is a piece of cake. All right, our women are now set to go. Lynn Bell and Carolyn Dean. Carolyn with the 15-0 lead and the angelic face but on duty as an Atlanta police officer, she is all business, apprehending criminals just part of her job. Now she'll try to apprehend either those red, blue, or yellow balls attached to the center cylinder against our two gladiators, Zap and Electra. Ready. Ready. No fake there, she went right for it and didn't even get close to that center post. So they'll take another crack at it. Here comes Zap, here comes Electra, and again they keep the two contenders oh. Oh, oh, away Hello. from that center post. They landed right on top of one another. Now scrambling their way back to the top for another spring. 30 oh. seconds to go. Here comes Zap. Lynn gets up, got a little bit closer that time. Electra will get in Carolyn's way again. Well, Electra gets any better at this, she's gonna sprout wings. Zap ain't too shabby herself. Every time Carolyn Dean reaches out for one of those yellow balls, Electra is in her face to stop her. And that is it. So fierce in midair are Electra and Zap. Lynn Bell, Carolyn Dean come away with no points in swing shot. And just how fierce are our gladiators? Let's take a look at it through Carolyn Dean's helmet cam as Electra comes into the picture. It says, no way. Wow. Halftime here on the American Gladiators in the second half of our season. The preliminary round matches continue. In our men's competition, Carlton Fluker, quite a story, 20 to six lead over Michael Small. Quite a story, more like the miracle worker. 140, 145 pounds against Tower, 275 pounds in the conquer ring, and he gets him out. Now that's that's a feat in itself, but you know, it crosses my mind, you don't suppose Tower might be looking for an opportunity to get even, do you? Nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, in the women's competition, our police officer from Atlanta, Carolyn Dean, has been a veritable whirling dervish. She has a 20-nothing lead over Lynn Bell. Coming up in three events, uh, Two women, they're gonna have to stop that woman in Powerball. They are Electra and Siren. They are standing by in the Gladiators locker room. And Electra, I'd like you and Siren to talk a little bit about the communication necessary in Powerball. Um, I know on the floor, um, the other teammates have really helped me a lot by pointing, where do I need to go? Or maybe pushing me, you don't need pushing. to be here. In other words, go over there, yeah. find your girl. She's there, she needs you. Know, she needs you. Um, 
Also, a lot of times she signs to me a little bit. Um, when the whistle blows, she puts her hand down. I need someone right in front of me so that's fair. So, you know, the, the referee isn't over here. You and know, while you're looking at your fair, so Well, it good. sounds like you two have the communication down to a science. Keep it going. Trying. Yeah. <laughs> Second half coming up. We'll look forward to both of you. Thanks. And it starts with assault. The men and the man. Saber ready to gun down our contenders. Lining up his sights. A very dangerous gladiator behind that tennis cannon. For the contenders, you've heard of Mr. T. This is Mr. C. That's his nickname, C, as in Carlton Fluker. He's got the lead right now. His mission to get 10 points, he can do that by hitting the target located above Sabre. Failing to do so, the contenders can also get individual points by firing weapons at one of the five scoring stations. Right on, right on. Let's do it to it. And Carlton will try to rely on his quickness to evade and elude those tennis balls. This kid can fly, believe me. So cool out there. The call Carlton quick draw there. Woo! Let's that one fly. It's the barrier in front of Saber. Man, those balls are moving. 30 Woo! seconds on the clock. Carlton nearly had his head ripped off. That one up in the upper stratosphere. Being picked up by Mission Control in Houston. 20 seconds on the clock. A little quick with the trigger. Oh, 10 seconds to go. Now five. Right at the corner. Oh. Get up and go. He may make it. Did he do it in time? Let's look at referee Larry Thompson. Does he get to six? Yeah. Six points for Carlton Fluker. And Saber gives him a round of applause. Saber, a very easy going, almost jovial person. Great sense of humor. But when the bell rings, he's all business. You are absolutely right about that, Larry. All right, Mike Small now. Contender ready. Gladiator ready. They'll need to pick up at least six points. Saber's got his cannon cranked up. <laughs> Mike Small lets it fly from station number one. Shake Saber up a little bit. 30 seconds on the clock. Woo! That was close. Mike's got plenty of time here. Oh, he was close. Oh. Behind the backside, and Saber running out of ammunition. Crowd counting down. Mike Small is going to get the extra point for crossing the finish line. So at least he keeps pace with Carlton Fluker by picking up six of his own. Saber just shaking his head. He can't believe he missed a couple of these shots. And this is how Michael avoided those shots, sliding in. This lad didn't lose enough flesh to the Velcro and Skytrack. He's definitely picking up some added abrasion time here at station number five. All right, time for the women and Diamond, who always, always sparkles in this event. Let's take her down. The Diamond, it's one of the toughest and most beautiful things on Earth. As nice as a Diamond is to look at, there's also a very hard side. So during my competition, you know, I try to think of that side of the rock and uh, go for it. And even though she's hard on the competition, there's a soft side to this diamond. She spends a lot of her time doing charity work, visiting children who could use some cheering up and a helping hand. After I've left the event on my drive home, I think about the day and it, it just <laughs> really makes me grateful to be in great shape, <laughs> to be happy. Diamond is one person who realizes that it takes hard work to stay in shape and be healthy. 
during intermission, I will take some kids down from the audience and exercise with them and make them realize that it's not easy to be an American Gladiator, but um, you have to work hard at it and be persistent at it. And it's quite obvious that Diamond works hard at her craft as being a Gladiator. Now she is setting her sights on Lynn Bell, who is yet to score in this competition. The pressure's on Lynn. Time is slipping away. Only a few events left before the Eliminator. Once again, 60 seconds to time limit. That shot travels wide. Lynn now at station number two. Five seconds left on the clock now, and before Lynn can get to station number three, I told you she was dangerous. Diamond Woo, gets another one to bite the dust. So two points for Lynn Bell. She has finally made her way onto the scoreboard. Dead eye Diamond, what a cowgirl. The game is in the aim. And her record could earn her fame one day in Assault 7, 3 and 3. Right now, she'll turn her attentions to Carolyn Dean, our police officer, a member of Atlanta's finest, who should be most at home in this event, firing weapons, a way of life for a police officer. And now she'll try to uh, adapt her techniques to some of our makeshift weapons here in Gladiator Arena. She never made it to station one. Diamond able to pick her off, and Carolyn may have twisted her knee a bit. Diamond celebrating the shot, but also concerned about Carolyn. Woo. Like I said, the game is in the aim. <laughs> Carolyn jumping very high, trying to avoid this shot, but it catches her right on the right knee. Now watch how high she goes. And it appears that she twists her ankle a little bit on landing. Hey, look, you better just sprout some wings and fly, because a wall is next, and Siren's got the muscle to make you hustle. The sky's the limit for our contenders here in the wall. Carlton Fluker and Michael Small. Right now, Carlton has a 26-12 lead over Mike. Following Carlton will be Cyclone. In pursuit of Mike will be Viper. Again, they've got 60 seconds to make it all 32 feet. They get a 10-second head start. If the contender can make it that far, it's worth 10 points. Carlton set a strategy. Go right up the middle, then break left to right. Michael, this is his favorite event. Says him during practice rounds, he was making it up the wall in less than 40 seconds consistently. Both men look to be in good shape. Carlton and Michael side by side. They're still up that inside face of this wall. Get so high on that chimney, then you have to break to the outside. We're under 30 seconds. Who's gonna make it first? Carlton's got his hands up there. He'll get the 10 oh. points, and Mike Small loses his concentration. As well as his grip. And Carlton Fluker starting to run away with this preliminary round match. Michael in a bit of a predicament here. He knows he's got to turn loose and make a lunge, but he misses. Okay, for Lynn Bell in the women's competition, it's put up, or I should say get up or shut up time. Get up the wall, that is. She trails Carolyn Dean by 18 points going into this event. Prospects not too good for Carolyn because she's going to be trailed by Electra. Lynn, on the other hand, will have Siren. And Siren's got an excellent record as well. And in our Ask a Gladiator segment, Nadine Goldberg of Orlando, Florida writes, Dear Siren, you speak so perfectly, it's almost impossible to tell you are hearing impaired. How do you talk so well? Hi, Nadine. That's a very good question. Um, I was born with all of my hearing, so I do remember sounds. I did learn to speak a little bit. When I was three, I overdosed on a bottle of adult aspirin, and since that time, I've had a slow, progressive loss of hearing. Um, 
When I did have problems speaking, I either had a speech therapist help me, or I'd have friends or family tell me how to say things the right way. And if you'd like to write to Siren or any of our other gladiators, write to Ask a Gladiator, 10203 Santa Monica Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 967. Both women have elected to take that inside line. Let's see if it pays off. Carolyn Dean, if she can get over that little hump there. No way. Not with her. The effort was there, but so was Siren and Electra. Their climbing skills a little bit better. So no points for either contender. Electra deadly on that wall. Remember, this is a gladiator that rock climbs in her spare time. Look how fast she closes the gap. And then look how vicious she gets when she gets a hold of Carolyn's ankle. You're coming off. And now through Siren's helmet cam, she's about to play a little game of gotcha with Lynn Bell, and down she goes. But stay with us and stay pumped up because Powerball is next. Towers getting ready for the fight. The men, Turbo, Cyclone, and Saber, their mission to stop the contenders here at crunch time, the event Powerball, where Michael Small trails Carlton Fluker 36-12. The men have 45 seconds to score as many times as they can. Goals in the outer cylinders worth two, a goal in the center cylinder worth three. And Powerball brought to you by Nintendo. Makers of Super NES, now you're playing with power, super power. Contenders ready! Gladiators ready! Luker, small, going for it all, and Michael puts one in, it bounces out, but that one will count. Already an action-packed game. This time, Turbo wraps up. Carlton Michael gets by Cyclone for a goal. We're under 30 seconds. Ooh, Carlton, Mr. C. Put a move on Mr. Saber. Mikey trying to get away from first Cyclone, then Saber. Saber's got him wrapped up. Carlton again manages to duck that clothesline shot. Five seconds to go. And that is it. Carlton wins it 7-4 to four and has given himself quite a cushion going into the Eliminator. He'll have a 13.5 second head start. Carlton with those sweet moves. Check it out. Loses the Gladiator, scores the points. He comes back and does it again. But watch what happens after this score. Bam! Hello, Turbo. Turbo, buddy, I don't even have the ball, so he takes out some of his frustration on Sabre with that nice move. Now, Mike Small, on the other hand, well, this is what happens to you when you get double teamed. Cyclone and Sabre working Mike over, now going one-on-one -on -one against Sabre. Sabre with a great job of defense, and Mike Small, flat out, runs out of gas. Our terrific trio, Zap. Siren and Sky talking things over as they get set to play Powerball here in crunch time. Carolyn Dean has a 22 lead over Lynn Bell. And this is both of our contenders' favorite event. Lisa's hubby Arville, her son ready, Chris, ready. go mommy go. <laughs> Carolyn Dean kind of limping through this event. She hurt her knee earlier in assault. But she is doing whatever it takes. Lynn Bell makes a nice move by Siren. Oh, zap up high. Zap goes high on Lynn Bell. Got her a beauty right in the mouth. Chris hoping that mom's okay. She's being attended to by her trainers. Larry Thompson, no question about that. Zap way too high. That is very, very dangerous. Lynn okay, however. We'll resume play with 31 seconds left on the clock. Zap has been sent to the sidelines. Carolyn Dean and Lynn Bell about to play one-on-one -on -one here against Sky and Siren. 
tough break for Carolyn there as that one bounced out, but not for Lynn Bell. She has success. Carolyn essentially playing on one leg here, trying to grit out the pains. Lynn playing with a split lip as Carolyn scores in that corner. Even on one leg, the police officer from Atlanta, Georgia, pretty darn good. Whoa! Three seconds left. And despite that shot from Zapp, Lynn Bell wins it 12-4 and is now within striking distance of Carolyn Dean going into the eliminator. Lynn's a tough cookie. Let's look at this shot one more time. Obviously a very, very flagrant blow delivered by Zapp. Carolyn Dean, on the other hand, about to find out what it's like to run into a brick wall named Siren. The view from Siren's helmet cam. Sky trying to get to Lynn Bell in time, but not before she scores. Carolyn was actually hampered quite a bit, although it doesn't show right there, by a sprained knee that she sustained in the assault. Let's hope she's okay for the eliminator. Lynn Bell is, and that's good news. We'll be back after this. I take winning very serious, and I'm a very, very competitive, uh, sometimes too competitive, I think. I cannot control my temper. Uh, my emotion runs wild, and I'm definitely the most ferocious out there. I'm not afraid to throw my body in front of anything. I'm not protecting my face or my body. I will take any pain that's given to me, and I will inflict just as much. But whether you like me or you don't, you got to love to hate me. Welcome back to Gladiator Arena and the final event, The Eliminator. The women will start things off. Now, Lynn Bell's 12-point effort in Powerball has given her a fighting chance now. Carolyn Dean's lead just 10 points, and that is worth only a five-second head start. And with that injured knee, it may not be enough. Let's check on her condition with Larry Zonka. Carolyn, I know your knee is giving you a little problem. First of all, do you think you can make it through The Eliminator? Yeah, I think I can make it. Uh, like they say, no pain, no gain. And I'm going to give it all I've got. What part of the eliminator is going to present the biggest problem? I think it's going to be getting up the treadmill because you need, it's all in your knees. Well, good luck. I'm going to need it. All right, buddy. Our police officer from Atlanta, Georgia. Based on what we saw in Powerball during crunch time, she is going to need a little luck because that knee looked none too sturdy. Again, she gets a five-second head start on Lynn Bell underneath the hand bike, ready to impose a potential 10-second penalty should the contenders fall off. Our gladiators Diamond and Sky and pumping and pushing the gauntlet. Siren and Zap. And the Eliminator is sponsored by Starburst Fruit Shoes. The juice is loose. And the Bell Clan hoping that Mommy can win it all. Ready! Larry Thompson about to start the two women on the way. Let's see what happens. Can she just, well, somehow, some way, limping her way up that treadmill. Carolyn Dean made it. Now you really need your legs here on the hand bike. And Carolyn Dean doing a great job of gutting it out. Now the spinning cylinder. She's trying to keep her balance. Oh, she does. Unbelievable. She is doing this on one leg virtually. Lynn Bell, however, cutting into that lead. She's right there in the cargo net as well. Carolyn Dean has reached the platform and now the zip line. Carolyn, keep those legs up, please. Lands on the seat of her pants, a nice one point landing, that's the way to do it. Now can she get over this wall? Here comes Lynn down the zip line. Carolyn Dean, her eyes as big as saucers. What a gutsy effort by our police officer from Georgia on one leg. She has done it. <laughs> I told you, no pain, no gain. Well, you certainly had some pain. Uh, was there, 
you know you were concerned obviously about getting up the treadmill it seemed like you had a just as good a time as ever yeah i just concentrated on putting all my power on my stronger leg and limp my way up were there any moments where you thought perhaps you were going to lose it no not at all no because i was just focused rest your rest yourself and get ready for the next level of the competition exactly. congratulations oh, what a gutsy performance by Carolyn Dean and ditto for Lynn Bell, her son Chris in her arms. Job well done by both women. Carolyn Dean moving on. In the men's competition, it has been all Carlton Fluker. The kid from East Lansing has scored in all but one event. As a result, his opponent, Mike Small, has a mighty large hole to climb out of. 13.5 seconds to be exact. The kid from Roselle Park, New Jersey, has come too far to quit. He's with Larry right now. Michael, 13 and a half second deficit. Just another obstacle on a rough day, right? Uh, yeah, 13 and a half seconds is a lot of time, but uh, we all know anything could happen in the Eliminator. One mistake and he's dead, right? You got it. Well, good luck. Thanks a lot. All right. And our tree surgeon is right about that. Many potential hazards and pitfalls on this Eliminator course. But Carlton Fluker, he's been sensational all day long. On course for the Gladiators underneath the handbike is Sabre and Viper and down the final straightaway activating the gauntlet Tower and Turbo TNT. And if Mike Small should win it would be a miraculous comeback. First obstacle to overcome that reverse treadmill again Carlton with a 13.5 second head start. Watch him fly he smokes that handbike. Now the cylinder long strides. Like a long jumper. Here comes Mike Small. Carlton Fluker already on the zip line, but Mike has cut into a bit of that lead. Whoa, down he goes in that spinning cylinder. That undoubtedly will be his undoing. Here comes Carlton Fluker. He's burning up this eliminator course, flying over that wall. Here he comes. Whoa, his time. 38 seconds, Larry Zonka. Carl, I don't know if that's a record or not in the Eliminator, but you fairly floated through it. You're like a jackrabbit coming through there. Thanks. <laughs> that's a way. Open up, Carl, and that's good. You know, <laughs> this is the first show of excitement I've seen all day out of it. Everything's instinct. Go for it. This is for my kids that I teach for you. Good enough. You did a fine job. Congratulations. All right. Woo! Carlton Fluker, part Superman, part Peter Pan, part Bambi. He shredded the Eliminator course like no one we have ever seen before. Watch here on the handbike. I smoked that one, no problem. Across the spinning cylinder, a couple of long strides, easy. Now watch me handle the cargo net. Hand over hand, no problem. The wall. I'll just leap over that, and there's no way these little red bags are going to stop me. I'm going to go on to the second round. I am bad. Carlton Fluker wins it. Coming up next week, more exciting preliminary round action for Larry Zonka. I'm Mike Adamley. So long from Gladiator Arena. This guy, man, is quick. <laughs>